In the previous movie tutorial, we touched upon some of the fading capabilities when editing and moving audio events around within your project. In Nuendo, you'll find various ways to achieve smooth and seamless fades and crossfades throughout your project. You'll also find that it offers an auto-fade function that works in the background to help remove any unwanted clicks or pops at the beginning of audio events. This can save precious time that was previously wasted in having to make detailed edits to your audio files to remove pops or clicks caused by looping or splicing. In this movie tutorial, we'll take a close look at how to customize and use these features for optimal results. The most common fade command, which is usually performed directly on the audio sample itself, is easily accessed from any context menu that appears on a selected event. It is found within the process menu category. It opens up a dialog window with various parameters to adjust your fades. Auto fades are set globally for an entire project, affecting each and every audio event. Since this can be a CPU intensive task when dealing with many events, you also have the option to set it individually per track. The global settings are found in the project menu under auto fade settings. Individual track auto fade settings are found in the track list using the auto fade settings button. The options for your crossfades are accessed in one of two ways. You can either double click on the actual crossfaded area of the events or choose the open fade editors option. However, note that this option only appears after you have created the crossfade. So let's take a few minutes now to fully understand the differences between these three distinct fade operations and learn exactly how we can put each one to best use. Fades are the most general method of creating a fade in or fade out. You simply highlight the event, choose the appropriate fade option from the context menu, and adjust the options accordingly. You have options to adjust the curves manually, choose curve types and configuration and preview before you commit. However, remember that if you just need to perform a simple fade and you don't require any extensive curve editing, then you can always just use the fade handles that are found at the edges of every audio event. Auto fades are an automatic process handled by Nuendo. There is no real user input required to use this function other than to set your specific settings upon starting a project. In the auto fade setting window, you have various options to fine tune the auto fade. The options there are similar to those found in the normal fade dialog window. These same settings are also found in the individual track auto fade options. The crossfade function is a bit more comprehensive and its primary use is to create a smooth, seamless fade between two or more events. To do this, you simply highlight the events that are overlapping each other and use the X key on the keyboard to automatically create a crossfade. Once a crossfade is created, you are given even more control. You can easily move the entire fade range and even trim or extend the range of the crossfade as needed. If you need to get even closer, then double clicking on it instantly opens up the crossfade editor. Here you will find many options for fine tuning your crossfades, including fade nudge options, length and overlap, curve types, overall fade volume, and the ability to change the timeline format within the fade editor so that you can adjust your fades based on the grid if necessary. If you feel you still want to manually make the changes, you can also grab any of the handle points within the graphic editor and make the necessary adjustments there as well. Alright, so we've got a good understanding of the fade features in Nuendo. Now let's take a look at a few ways in which to use them effectively within your projects. Let's say you already have a great crossfade curve created, but you're not happy with the exact location in which the crossfade occurs. You could move the crossfade, but the problem is that you can only move it within the boundaries of the existing audio event ranges. To work around this, you can activate the Move Audio mode for the fade nudge. This essentially increases or decreases the range of the first audio event being faded. This allows you to move the entire fade range and experiment with placing it on various areas of the entire audio event, areas that were otherwise previously out of range. Another useful tip is the use of the equal gain and equal power modes. Equal gain creates a fade that has an equally summed volume level for both the fade in and fade out throughout the entire duration of the fade. 
The equal power mode creates a fade that has an equal amount of energy or power throughout the entire fade as well. I generally find that the equal gain works for most general purpose crossfades. However, try using the equal power mode if you're trying to do a long crossfade that contains complex audio material and you still find that it's not quite as seamless as you like, even after making many attempts to adjust the response and draw in custom curves. Now that we have a good grasp of the various fade techniques, you'll begin to understand just how powerful the fade features are in Nuendo. With each method, you can achieve very seamless and smooth fades, no matter what the audio material may consist of. The implementation of the audio fade function alone is a great time saver for cleaning up those pesky clips and pops that can easily pop up almost anywhere, even when performing very accurate edits. Again, the key here is flexibility, and Nuendo definitely comes through strong when it comes to flexible methods for achieving your fades and crossfades.